Hello everyone! Today we're going to legitimately be doing the biggest crop ever, because thanks to the new garden pots we have access to, we can actually utilize more of our farm space than ever before. So we're finally going to see exactly just how much money we can make off one single farm off one single harvest. I'd wager it's going to be in the tens of millions. And that's because the crop we're going to be doing is going to be the sweet jam berry, which comes from the rare seeds. We're going to do as many of these as we can possibly fit on this farm, both inside the house and outside. And of course, fertilizing it. So this is going to take a lot of work, but I think the result's going to be worth it. This is one of those crops where if you do actually manage to do it, this should be the only thing you ever have to plant. Uh, after that, you'll have more money than you know what to do with. Also, I'm not going to be using sprinklers for this because sprinklers obviously take up a little bit of space in your field. I think to cover your entire field, if it's the original farm layout, is 140 or so sprinklers. And that's 140 sweet jam berries that I want to profit off of. And sprinklers also don't water the garden pots. So I'd have to manually water them anyway, and there's actually going to be quite a few outside. So instead, I'm actually going to use rain totems, because they'll water every single thing out here. And that's less work for me, which means my basement needs a little rearranging. A couple bombs later, that should take care of these. Nice and easy. Now, a bunch of garden pots. This is the layout I've decided on a cellar. I decided to change it up for once. Uh, this is pretty efficient use of space, so now it's just a matter of fertilizing and planting. Obviously, these ones I am going to have to water every day because rain doesn't fall in my basement. For those of you that might want to try this in a legitimate game, the way to do this is you buy a rare seed from the traveling merchant and then grow it till it's done, multiply it, put it in a seed maker, you'll get two or three hopefully. At that point, replant and do the process again. One turns into two, two turns into four, four turns into eight, and obviously it gets really big really fast. Normally you do this in a greenhouse, but the garden pots have actually allowed you to use your house to do this, though I understand you can't use the garden pots until you have the greenhouse anyway. But that does essentially turn your house into a greenhouse anyway, so you can finally use it for all sorts of interesting crops. Normally I think I managed to fit about 120 or so plants down here. I'm not sure what I've squeezed in with this layout, but it's going to be similar. Basement done. And it's at this point I realize how long this is actually going to take, because I need to place three things all over the place. Also, these kids are going to be no shortage of an annoyance for me because they run around getting in the way constantly and I can't get rid of these ones. If anyone's found a way to actually get rid of the kids since the update, please let me know. I will love you forever. Now that I look at it, I realize my house could be just a little bigger. Uh, but then again, maybe currently getting married is not going to be such an easy task for me. Okay, currently all the bachelors and bachelorettes of the town, not super happy with me. So we're going to try and find a workaround because I want their space. As soon as I find one of them, I'm not going to be picky at this point. First one I see, they're going to be my victim. You look like a good victim. All right, what are your thoughts on me currently? You've got some nerves speaking to me, but I brought you nice flowers. And they don't want them. Okay, this is going to be harder than I thought. Well, I'm going back to the farm to continue planting while I think about how to get around the idiots. To be fair though, I do get just a little bit of extra space up in their spot if there's no one here. It is worth more to have people in the house, but I don't know if that's going to be a feasible option at this point because they all hate me so much. Kind of ironic, isn't it? All the town NPCs foiling my grand idea. Well, I'm going to finish off the house and then we'll move to the outside crop. The next problem I've encountered is this moron standing in the way. Still can't figure out how to get rid of it, can't push it out of the way, it just stands there right in the way. Won't move because it's surrounded by garden pots now. Maybe if you take this directly to the witch in a swamp you'll get a better connection and that will take care of you. Okay, whatever. Not gonna worry about the garden pots up there. You know, one of the reasons I was excited for multiplayer is so that I could have slaves essentially come on the farm and do this kind of thing for me. But here I am doing it myself again. I've also just realized that I can actually be putting pots in the end of these rows because I can still reach everything on the end. So I can actually squeeze a few more crops in that way. And that's actually going to make a considerable difference in the end. I want you all to know that I already regret this idea. And I'm not even done the house yet. I'm still going to do the whole outside. Just finished the house. One thing is clear, if you're going to do this legitimately, that is without mods to freeze time, you're going to need to do the garden pots way in advance because you're not going to have time to settle the garden pots all in one day, fertilize, plant and water. Way too much time. Okay, now we only have about 3,500 spaces to do out here, so this shouldn't take long at all. The first thing I'm going to do is just bomb everything. Everything that's bombable will disappear very quickly. Then I got to go sell a bunch of animals. And then I got to demolish some buildings. And then I got to fill my greenhouse. And I got to fill the edges. And I got to fill the area up by my shipping bin. So this is still going to take quite a while. All right, the field has been pretty thoroughly bombed. That didn't take long at all. But this part outside isn't actually going to take the longest. It's going to be placing all the growing pots, selling all the pigs and animals in the barns, setting up the greenhouse. This is actually already started, but I got to replace the ancient seeds with the sweet jam berries. This is what the greenhouse looks like with all the garden pots inside it. Actually expands it by quite a bit. Now, if you want to demolish buildings like I do, 
Most people go to Robin's, but you can actually go to the Wizards. He's open for better hours. Robin's often not there, or she you have to wait till 9 o'clock for her to even open. The Wizard is open first thing in the morning. Not that it matters today, because it's 3.40 endlessly. Uh, unless for some reason the Wizard doesn't do his buildings anymore, at which point you have to go to Robin's. Well, good news for you, because I broke the Wizard, you get my business. And yes, I am eventually going to demolish the tractor barn, but I need the tractor for an outer plant. It's going to be the last thing I demolish and replace because it's going to save me a lot of trouble. Now normally this is as close to the edge of the farm as you can plant. You can't plant right along the fences, but using the garden pots, you sure can. So this essentially expands my field. Keep in mind, once you get to the bottom, you don't actually have to use the garden pots because you can plant pretty tight to all these edges. It's only on the left and right side of the farm that it's really going to make a difference. And in saying that, it's definitely mostly on the right side. The left side doesn't really have a lot of spots for you to put the garden pots. There are a few, but not that many. Do you think Grandpa likes the garden pots that are covering his grave? The greenhouse also has some dead space around it, so be sure to occupy all of that. And this is what the space around my house looks like. I'm actually going to take my tractor and go plant everything right now. That way I can get rid of the tractor barn and finally get this thing completed. Alright, I think I got everything all nicely planted up, with the exception of the tractor barn and the space below it. But this is what it looks like for those of you that want to see. It does look pretty cool. More seeds than I've ever seen before on a stock farm. So, let's head up to the town Ginger's house and destroy that tractor barn, finish it up, and then figure out the watering scheme. Things are a little crazy in the corner, but whatever, I made it work. More seeds than ever before. If you're going to do this, like I said, I would suggest making some rain totems. You're definitely going to want an iridium watering can anyway, because rain totems don't water any of these garden pots. You're going to have to water all of these, the ones in the greenhouse, the ones in the house especially. You can fill your watering can in the sink now, so that kind of helps. And if you don't already know, the garden pots are really easy to make themselves. One clay, ten stone, one refined quartz. As long as you've been holding on to those ingredients as you've been finding them as you play, you should have tons of those. As far as the rain totems are concerned, they're a little bit harder to make. They take one hardwood, one truffle oil, Five pine tars. So you're gonna need pigs to turn into truffle oil once they find the truffles. Pine tar you get from pine trees, put a tapper on those, and hardwood. So it's definitely gonna take an investment to make those, but you can do it. I've definitely done it before. Also, if you happen to have the tractor mod, you can just water it that way. It's still not gonna water the garden pots, but this is also an option too. For some reason I get to keep the tractor despite the fact that I destroyed its barn. Also, I can press my handy water all crops button and it waters everything. But again, not the garden pots. I'm sure this is something to work on in the future, but for now, I'm stuck hand watering, so yay. Okay, everything outside is watered for the first day. Rain totems will take care of all of these for the remainder of the days, but I am still going to have to manually water greenhouse and house, which isn't the end of the world. But it's going to be work. All right, that's it. My house is finally watered, so you know what that means. I finally get to sleep and save my progress, because if the game crashed now, I'd lose my mind. Guess what I forgot to do yesterday? Use a rain totem, so now I get to water all the outside crops again because I'm an idiot. Many hours later, literally many repetitive hours of watering later, they're finally ready to go, the 25th of fall today. Looks like I did miss a few here and there along the way with the watering, though it's kind of hard to tell because they all overlap so much. But basically, this is what it looks like. Biggest crop ever done of sweet gem berries. I would like to say though, that watering really sucked. I really, really hate this idea at this point. I wish I never did it, but we're here now. We're done and there's only one thing left to do. That of course is pick each and every one of these, see how many there are for one and how much they're worth for two, because you can totally do this legitimately in game. Picking them is going to take a little while in itself but not nearly as long as the watering did. So in total for just the house including the basement we have 210 gold quality, 96 silver and 31 regular. That works out to about 340 sweet gem berries just inside the house. So that is extra on top of everything I'm going to have out in my field and greenhouse so this is going to be pretty valuable. The greenhouse is picked, the last thing I gotta do is harvest everything out here. Now I am going to use a tractor for this, so how I'm going to do that is just clear a space for a new tractor shed. I'm going to create a new tractor, and then I can use that to harvest and it's going to go a lot faster. Okay, maybe I was wrong. The tractor apparently takes three days to build, so I guess I'm picking this by hand too. Wow, this idea gets worse and worse as it goes on. But at least on the bright side I can use my scythe to harvest and that's actually going to save a ton of time. Okay, finally got them all picked. There's definitely a lot of them. There's two stacks of gold quality, 999 each stack, plus 523, 202 silver quality, plus another 999 silver quality, plus only 400 regular ones. I'm not going to count them now. We're going to see what they're worth overnight, finally. I think it's going to be in the tens of millions, but I can't really remember how much these are actually worth. Pretty sure it is in the tens of millions, but let's find out together, right now, finally. Hours of stupid, repetitive hard work, and we're left with... A very shaky number. Alright, according to my quick and sketchy math, we're looking at about 17 million gold. 17 million gold for a single harvest. 
That's basically enough to buy almost everything in the game. The most expensive item currently is the gold clock at 10 million. There's a few items that are worth 1 million. So obviously you do one of these, you don't really ever have to worry about money again. Even if you do something half the size, that's still tons of money. My conclusion? Was it worth filling my entire house, basement, greenhouse, and surrounding fields with garden pots? Absolutely not. I regret doing this idea, but I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching.